my recording. Uh, and there is a, a URL on the screen. I decided not to do any slides today. So thank you for coming. This is the Zotero workshop that I'm doing for the human resource management uh, graduate students. Uh, I also should note, I don't know if anybody here is from, but uh, my colleague Stephanie was teaching um, undergrads uh, an APA citation workshop this evening. And I said, hey, if they're desperate for more Zoom time, just give them the link and then they can drop in. So we may have some undergraduate students as well. Uh, and today we're gonna be talking about Zotero, which uh, on one level is called a citation manager. And that's how most people use it, is to track their articles and put their citations in papers. I tend to think of Zotero more as a, a research assistant uh, because it can be used to do much more advanced things. Now today, my goal is to get through the basics with you, uh, which has to do with making sure that uh, you can install and set it up and configure it so that it works with the York Library Collection. Um, we're gonna talk about different ways that you can get your articles and information into Zotero and then the basics of how to actually use Zotero to create a citation in the software, uh, in, a, in, my, in, a, in a paper, sorry. And uh, in, then at the end, we will talk a little bit more about where you can go from there if you want to learn more. So my assumption is that uh, if you are using Zotero, <laughs> that it's probably new to you and you're probably new to putting things in and so you may not have uh, a lot of content uh, the larger your library gets the more you're going to want to keep it organized uh, and some of the more advanced material we'll talk about that uh, my focus today is just going to be on the basics and then I'll point you at other places that you can go to, to learn more about the advanced stuff um, this worksheet here if you go this is available online if you go to um, uh, library.york.ca. Uh, I created a bit.ly link for you, but if you go to library branches, Bronfman, hopefully you folks are getting used to this right now, under business research guides and go to the human resource management guide, there is, <coughs> um, there it is, there is a Zotero beginner workshop PDF file there, and you can grab that. Uh, I already have it open in another window. Um, you could print this off to work through it, or, or um, if you just have the PDF, the nice thing is that it will give you the links that you can actually uh, use to jump and, uh, and get to things that I'm talking about today. Um, move this down here, there we go. So that is what I'm going to be working through, and that is posted there. Um, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is <laughs> how to get the software. So if you go to uh, zotero.org, that's O-R-G, this is where you're going to get the download. And it is available for Macintosh, Windows, and Linux. I don't think anybody here is using Linux. If you are, yay, I'm a fan. Um, I'm on a Mac today. I also have access to Windows. Uh, zotero is very much the same across Mac and Windows, just a couple of minor differences. So it's pretty much going to work the same for you. And all you're gonna do to get the software up and running is to click this download link. And uh, we'll come back to this part about the Zotero connector on the right a little bit later. But the Zotero for Mac software, uh, it should detect whether or not you're on Windows or Mac and then offer you the correct one. If it doesn't detect it properly, there are links underneath for the Windows version. You just download the installer, uh, save it, and then come into your downloads folder and uh, double click the file to install it. And that's gonna get Zotero up and running. And this is what, there, I lost it. No, I didn't actually, I didn't start Zotero. <laughs> so this is what Zotero actually looks like. So this is a, a library of uh, things in here. Um, and I will walk through this interface. But before we want to do that, um, there are a couple of other things that we want to do to make sure that Zotero is ready to use uh, for your work. So Zotero is a standalone piece of software that you can use to put your information into and do your citations. But to really make it effective, we wanna do two things. Number one is we wanna connect Zotero to your word processor and to your web browser so that you can uh, import things online and also more importantly, put things into Microsoft Word. And then the other thing that we can do, which you don't have to do, but is a really nice bonus, is there's a way to hook, hook up Zotero 
so that uh, you can actually use it to run a search directly in the York Library catalog. So um, if you are following along, and I encourage you to do so as much as possible, um, you can run the Zotero software. And uh, I'll give you a tour of the interface in a moment, but we want to set up the other pieces before we move any further. So in the Zotero menu, under preferences, or if you are in Windows, it'll be under the edit menu, there will be preferences. There's a bunch of uh, options in here, which I have to move this window. Uh, come here. There we go. Uh, there is an option in here that we want to use to get uh, the uh, word processor and the other things hooked up. Uh, I'm actually realize I'm skipping, so I'll, I'm going to leave that for now because I'm doing things in the wrong order. So the first thing we want to do is the browser connector. So if you go to the tools menu under install browser connector, uh, it'll take you back to this web page where you'll say install the Zotero connector for Firefox. And uh, I don't have it installed right now. The connector works for Firefox, but it also works for Google Chrome, for Safari, and Microsoft Edge. Safari is the, the Macintosh browser, and Edge is the Microsoft, the current Microsoft browser. To install this on Firefox, uh, all you have to do is click the button, and most web browsers will work similar. It'll say, do you want to add this thing to your web browser? You say yes, you say add, and then the connector is installed up in the corner. So what you will see if Zotero is not running or if it's brand new, is this little Z icon, which means Zotero is there. A uh, thing that confuses a lot of folks when they're using Zotero is that this icon will change depending on what web page you're on, but I'll show you that a little bit more when we actually get to work with it. So that's all you need to do for the web browser. So now that's available there in the web browser. The second part, the part that I skipped ahead to, is in the preferences folder. Underneath site, because we need to be able to set this up so we can do our citations, there's a button here called word processors. And there's a button here for installing the add-in into Microsoft Word. And all you have to do is click that button and it will install Microsoft Word uh, Zotero in, in it, uh, the little add-on for it. And the so way that you will, yes? So, so in the preferences, when we go to site, what do we do next? Uh, you click on the word processors button, which is underneath the site. Can you oh, yeah, see my I screen? Yes, the yes, I see that. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and okay, then, install yes, and then install it there. So now, if I install, if I run Microsoft Word on this computer, I set up a very basic account here with like almost nothing running on it so that things could look nice and fresh <laughs> and not too cluttered yeah. up. So I'm actually running Word for the first time on this computer. That's too funny. Um, but I will show you in just a moment that now that I have installed the Microsoft Word add-in, that it's going to add a menu inside Microsoft Word. I just need to wait for Word to open. somewhere here. Can I ask a question? It's Arlene. Yes, go ahead. Yes, so I, I went ahead and I I installed it before the session. Good. Was is that okay? So can I just go to go to it and open it and yep. Okay. And I should be okay? Yes. Okay, thanks. So what I want to show you now is that if I open Microsoft Word and just create a blank document, you'll see that in Microsoft Word I have a menu item here now called Zotero. So if you have that, then that means that Zotero is now connected to Microsoft Word. Um, Zotero will also work with Google Docs. I don't, I don't use it there very much. Most people use Word. There's also a free Office software package called LibreOffice, Libre meaning free. And if you have that installed, there's also an add-in for that. Uh, one of the points that I make in the worksheet, uh, the PDF, is that uh, you may not know that as a student enrolled at York, you actually have access to Microsoft Office for free. Uh, and there's a link in the PDF that you can use to get it. You just have to register with your York account and you can get access to it there. So that basically gives us Zotero completely set up. So we've got software installed, we've got the word processor added installed, and we have the browser connector installed. So now let me show you what we're looking at here. So this is the main Zotero window. 
And it's divided into three broad sections from the left to the right. And I have a, a selection of items that I've just installed here that are part of our um, Zotero training course. So on the left, what you are seeing here is, let's see if I can do, On the left, this is the area where you uh, actually organize your information. We're not gonna talk about this very much today, but it's in two parts. The top part is where you can create folders called collections to store your content and organize it any way you would like. And on the bottom is what's called the tag selector. So you can add tags to things and then you can use this tag selector to help uh, filter and find your content. Like I said, most of you, uh, we won't have many articles, uh, at least at the beginning, in your Zotero collections. And so this is probably not going to be uh, very helpful to you to do the organizing thing, but um, you should know about it. The thing is at the top, this uh, big box folder here called My Library, this basically will show you by default everything that you have added into Zotero. And then if you actually have things organized, you can click into the folders and actually see things in whatever folder that you've put them in. So we're just going to be looking at my library today. The center section uh, basically gives you a list of the items that you have in your library. So if I have my library highlighted, I'm seeing everything that I have in Zotero. I'm glad I'm using this account because my account, I have, I think, 2,700 items in Zotero. Uh, it's a lot. Uh, but I've been using Zotero for many years. This is much smaller and much more manageable. Uh, and the icons here will give you some idea of what these items are. So this little blue book icon means that this is a book. And the little open book means it's a, a section of a book. Uh, there are icons here. This one looks like a little webcam. It's for a video. Um, this one here is for an online blog post. Uh, this one here that looks like a page is for a journal article. And you'll see the same icons in the web browser as well when you're looking, uh, when you're using Zotero. So this will give you that. And as I can see on the left hand side, if I'm clicking around inside my Zotero folders and I'm going into different areas, that the contents of the center section are updated to reflect whatever I've got in there. So um, in this case, I don't think I have, there we go. So if in this Miriam Tave subdirectory under media coverage, you can see I've got some things in there. And so the whatever is shown in the center will be limited by what you've got picked on the left hand side. So I'm just going to use my library today. And then on the right hand side of the window is your information pane. So this is uh, if I have this Terra Terra terrorism article uh, selected and you can see the author's name here is listed as not. This is the title that on the right hand side, you've got the information panel. So by default, it's going to show you this. So you can see here in this right hand side, a lot of the information that you would use when you were actually citing this article in a paper. So I've got the, uh, the fact that it's a journal article. Uh, and if I click on type, I can actually edit any one of these. So if I uh, have the wrong thing, if this turns out that it's not a journal article, it's actually a blog post, I could change that. Uh, underneath that, I've got title, I've got author, I've got abstract the publication, the volume issue, page range, the date, anything that I would need to basically create a citation. And you can fill out as much or as little of this as possible. The more you fill out, the better. Um, there are also other things here that you can do. So uh, you can add tags to items in Zotero. I'm not talking about tags very much today, but uh, for example, I usually use this to uh, either keep track of the topic or uh, keywords for an article, or sometimes in this case of this all caps one, I will use it to keep track of something that I wanna do. So it's an action. I, this is an article I haven't read yet. So I wanna uh, keep that note so that I can do that. You can also add notes to articles. So uh, you can actually add a text file that I can just type stuff into. So if I were making notes in this article, for example, I can add this little note. Uh, and then it gets stored. If I go back to the center section, you can see that I have the article here and then I have as an attachment to that article, I've got this note of gibberish that I just typed, but you'll see that I also have a PDF file. I actually have two for some reason. Uh, I also have a PDF file, which is attached to this article. So not only do I have in the center section, this item that has all of the information on it, but if I were to double click this attachment, I could open the PDF and look at it. And I have this note, which is attached to the item that I can use to keep track. I can copy and paste quotes from the article that I like, uh, write down my thoughts, observations, questions, um, anything at all, basically, that I'm interested in. It's totally free form. You can put whatever text you want in there. 
Uh, and then you also have the ability in Zotero to relate items together. And I'm not going to talk about that today. It's not terribly helpful. The key thing we're going to be looking at today is the information panel, because that's the thing that's the most important for making sure that your information is correct in your um, uh, item information and so that you get correct citations. Just briefly going to talk about some of the things up across the top here. So starting on the left, you've got the uh, new collection button. So you use this to create folders. Uh, I don't use that very much. Uh, the next one is for creating other things called groups and feeds. Uh, groups you can actually use for uh, collaborating online. You can create a free account at Zotero.org and you can create a shared group. So if you're working on a group project, you can actually create a group library that you can all contribute to. Again, we're not talking about that too much today, but there's information on that available. Some of the most important buttons that you will be using for your work are the ones in the center section here, right above the center panel. So this plus button here is for adding an article manually. There's a little magic wand button where you can enter uh, an ISBN for a book or something called a DOI, which is a digital object identifier. Uh, which is more and more common from journal articles. And uh, Zotero will try to look up those identifiers and try to pull the information from the article that you've entered uh, for you automatically if it can find it. This next button here is for adding notes. So you can use the note button that I showed you on the right, or you can actually create a note that stand alone on a, stands all by itself as a separate little document that you can use for various things, or you can create a child note which is what this one is down here. So I've got the terror, terror, terrorism, and this is a child note because it is attached to the, to the item. Uh, you can also attach files. So you could theoretically store a Word document uh, in here if you were writing some things. Uh, you most often are gonna be storing PDF files, but depending on your discipline, sometimes people will store images, uh, any of that kind of stuff you can store in Zotero as well. Then there is an advanced search bar. So this will give you the ability to search through your library and you can search for almost any field. So you can see here, I can search by title, page numbers, conference name, country, DOI, almost anything you can possibly imagine basically from that menu. Uh, this is expanded and it's going to make a mess. So I'm just gonna do that. There we go. Um, and then there's another search bar over on the right where you can just do a, a quick little search uh, so if I just have a keyword, for example, a little search, all of the text that it is aware of in the article, all of the fields and information and try to show you search results based on that. And then on the right here, there is uh, a library lookup feature. And uh, you will see that you have the ability to connect um, Zotero to Crossref and to Google Scholar, which is great. Uh, the other thing that you can do, and this is the other part that I want to show you, which is a, a nice to have, but not mandatory. And this is on the worksheet is that if you go into um, the Zotero preferences, there is um, under advanced, this thing here called open URL. And what this basically does is it gives you a way to uh, connect Zotero directly to the library. So uh, if I go to my web browser, and if I go to uh, Zotero.org, there is, the URL is actually in the document, but if I search for open resolver, so I search for open URL, there we go. This is the open resolvers page. This link is in the PDF file. And uh, you can scroll down here under North America, under York University, here, there is a very ugly looking link that you can copy. Uh, there's also, you can just copy and paste it directly out of the PDF file. But if I copy this and I go back to Zotero and I paste it into that field, then it's basically ready to go and I can close this window. And here's what that does. So in this case, let's go to this Terra Terra Terrorism article. You'll see that now that I have an item selected, if I go to this little right arrow, that I have a bunch of options. I can take a look at the PDF, which is fine. I can also do that with a double click. I have the ability to look up this article in Google Scholar, but then there's another link here that says library lookup. So if I click this link, it's gonna open my web browser and go directly to the York University Libraries catalog and try to find this article for me. So this is a great uh, trick if you have a citation that you get from somewhere else and you haven't found the article in the library yet, 
uh, to actually connect Zotero directly to the library. So now I can actually go directly to this article. It's just a nice little uh, tool. Uh, pause really briefly to see if there are any questions and then we're going to talk about actually how to get journal articles and things into Zotero. How's everybody doing? Is this Arlene here? Yes. Um, I am just happy on this first session to follow along with you, but I know I'll have to revisit this after and really work through this. It's a lot, I find, um, yes. but I'm excited yes. to see what's available. So, um, so in terms of expectations, I'm just following along with you this first round. That's yeah? perfectly fine. What I recommend you do is, uh, when I post this, this worksheet that I put together is basically going to walk you through all of the yes. steps that we do. So yeah, uh, I printed you, you, it. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So I would say, yeah, just follow along. If you can actually do it alongside me, that's great. If not, keep this handy and then you can come back to this later and then it should be, you'll be like, oh yeah, I remember we did this and I'm exactly. hoping that this, the steps will be simple and you could just follow along. Now. Yeah. So it's all yes. good. Good. Okay, good. Thank you. All right. Chris, just sorry, one, one question on my end. Um, sure. It might, might, might be because I'm using my, my corporate laptop right now, but I think IT has blocked it for me. So is there a web-based Zotero I can use or do we have to download the software? <laughs> uh, it works much better if you can download it and install it. Uh, I would recommend that you um, talk to your IT friends to see if they can hook that up for you. If you don't have access to that, what you can do is on Zotero.org, you can create an account. Um, I already have one here, it's free, it doesn't cost anything. So I can just fill in this thing here. And what you get is a, a web-based version of Zotero. So you can see that this is the web-based version. It looks, the layout is the same, it looks a little bit different. So you can see the libraries on the left, you can see the tags, you can see the items in the center, and then the uh, item pane on the right. So it looks just a little bit different. The problem with this one is that you wouldn't be able to use the web connector to import items necessarily, um, but you will be able to do the manual add-in or, uh, or the little magic wizard. Um, okay. There is, if I go to the Zotero connector, um, under, no, 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 not this one, there's my, I'm pushing the wrong thing. Uh, there's a preferences. Where the heck is it? So I click. I keep installing this thing improperly. Uh, it's not showing up for me, but there should be a preferences menu in here, and you can actually set up your uh, Zotero.org credentials inside the preferences for the browser connector, and then theoretically you should be able to use the browser connector with the online version as well. So that's your your best alternative until you can get the software installed. Okay, thanks. All right. Okay. Um, Sorry, just one thing. Um, yeah. I did. I, I'm trying to follow along as you were explaining. In my case, when I went to preferences to install the Word document, it says that Word is already installed. However, Perfect. when I look at my Word, I don't see any, I, I don't see Zotero in the menu. You don't see and the Zotero same, menu? I don't see Zotero on the menu. I just reset okay. the Word all over again, but I still don't see it. So I don't know if it's hidden somewhere in there. Uh, and second, in terms of uh, the Google, uh, the Zotero connector in Chrome, I don't see the logo in Chrome, but I do have a message that has popped up on one of my searches, which is Zotero detected that you're accessing search from a proxy. Would you like to automatically redirect you to request to search except in proxy to see certain issues? Yep. Does it need to be installed and it's working? Because I didn't, I didn't that mean, it. yeah, it's installed and it's working. I'm not quite sure what's up with your word connector. We might have to revisit that. Try if you go back the if you go back into the preferences and the WordPressers, you'll see there's a button that says reinstall Microsoft Word add-in. Yes, uh, give that a shot as well. Okay. Um, right. Yeah. Okay. It's also possible that the menu item is just hidden for you, but I don't know what the easy fix for that one is. Awesome. All right. Uh, now I'm going to go through the hardest way to add something to Zotero first, and the hardest way to do it is uh, manually. So if I go to my Zotero worksheet, under adding items, uh, what I've got here is uh, an, an example of a PDF file that I may have been given in Moodle, for example. Uh, and this is an article actually from one of the interim courses for this fall. And um, I wanna be able to add this 
choose Zotero so that I can cite this paper if I'd like to. And this is very often what will happen if you're given a reading is that I just rely on the information that's here. And you can see that I've got most of the information that I need for the citation in this little chunk of text that was up at the top. Sometimes I have to actually look at information uh, in that article uh, to be able to do that. But if I wanna add this to Zotero manually, uh, all I do is click this little plus and you'll see that I have a whole list of uh, different types of documents. So you see there's artwork, audio recording, book, book section, which is like a chapter, a conference paper, journal article, magazine article, uh, report, uh, thesis, all these kinds of different types. It's very important that you pick the correct type, because if you know anything about APA citation, you may know that uh, different citations for different kinds of things look a little bit differently. So first thing you want to do is you want to add a journal article, pick the correct type. And what you'll get is a blank entry in Zotero with a blank list on the right and all of these blank fields. And if I add the journal article by mistake and I need to change the type, I can do that. And in fact, if I come in here and I just say document, uh, you can see that there are the fields that are available for document change. I have less available there. It's just, it's more basic. Whereas journal article, I've got uh, the ISSN, which is the serial, the serial uh, for the periodical number. I've got um, library catalog, call number, all kinds of other crazy stuff in here. A lot of which I don't really necessarily need. And then what you have to do, if you want to do this manually, is examining sources of influence on... Why did I pick an article with such a long title? Uh, turnover and uh, part-time work context and put in the title. Uh, I'm just gonna put Dr. McBay in here and you'll see that it split a field into first name and last name. Uh, I can add multiple authors with these little plus signs. So in this case, there's two authors. So I've got Dr. Karakowski as well. Uh, Leonard, uh, and sometimes uh, if it's a book, you may have an editor. So you can see, you'll, if you use this little drop down here, you can actually put in editor, reviewed author, translator, if that's important to you as well. All of those information can go in there. Uh, the publication in this case is uh, leadership and organization development journal. Uh, and I can tell from the top here, it's going back to this, that this is volume 21, issue three from the year 2000. And it says the page is 136. So I can come back in here and do volume 21, issue three, page 136. And I know it's the year 2000. And the rest of this stuff, series, series title, series text, are probably not applicable in this case. Most of the time you don't. Uh, this field here called DOI, I'll talk about uh, in the next little bit about how, another way to add articles. But this is the primary information that you would need to cite a journal article. This part here, I put in a question in the form or in the worksheet. Uh, I said, is there anything missing from the information? Does anybody, can anybody say what they think might be missing here? So in, in this case, for a journal article, usually the page range is actually what is listed. So I would, uh, and this happens a lot if things are automatically imported into Zotero, where instead of putting, say, pages 136 to 144, it'll just say 136. Or sometimes it'll just say eight, which means that the article is eight pages long. So you always have to check that one and make sure that you've got the full page range. So in this case, I know it's 136 to 144. Worst case scenario, check the PDF file because there's usually a page number in the footer <laughs> and then you'll know. Um, some online only articles, digital articles don't have pages, in which case you would just leave this blank. So this basically will give you now, if I look at this, it's outlisted alphabetically in here. So now in my Zotero library, I've got the article listed by title. You see, I've got the creator name and I have all of the information here that I need to be able to do this. And you can see down at the bottom, it says that I added it tonight. And if I edit this, it'll tell me when I modified it as well. So that's basically the easiest way to get an article in. Now, the most important thing you need to remember about using Zotero, if you remember anything else this evening, is that garbage in equals garbage out. Zotero can automate a lot of things for you and make your citation easier. 
But if you have bad information in Zotero, you're going to get bad citations when you put them into Microsoft Word. So be very careful and make sure that every time you add something, whether you do it manually or automatically, you always take a moment after you finish to double check to make sure that the information is listed correctly. Sometimes things like the title might come in in all caps or the, uh, the names might be incorrect or you'll just have an abbreviation and you want the full name. Um, all kinds of like the page number thing I mentioned before, or there might be a full date with a, a month and a day and you just want the year. So always, always double check. Otherwise you're gonna get bad citations when you actually create them. Okay, so that's the manual way to do it. It's the slowest, it's the ugliest way. Uh, like I say in the worksheet though, it is the most thorough because you're entering the information manually. So it's probably gonna be correct because you are a fully functioning person and you uh, <laughs> will use your brain when you're doing it. Now the other thing that you can do uh, is the way that I like to, my favorite way to do this is to add an item, item using something called a DOI, which is a digital object identifier. So this is uh, a citation for an article that you might see in a course syllabus uh, or even online somewhere. And you'll see that a lot of them now are ending with this thing called uh, DOI. So you see this DOI.org and then you'll see this pattern that's usually 10 with some numbers and then a slash and then a bunch of code afterwards. Sometimes it's all numbers, sometimes it's not, but the pattern you'll get to, you'll start to recognize it really quickly. And what a DOI is basically is a permanent link to this article. So that means, for example, if I have an online journal and I was independently published and then Elsevier comes along and buys my journal and so all my website gets moved and that kind of thing, this DOI will always point to the home of the actual article. And the nice thing about these digital object identifiers is that they're issued by uh, a centralized authority that makes sure that every single one is unique. So this is the um, link for doi.org for this article. And th this is unique to this article and it will only work for this article. And when you have a DOI, what you can do is click the little magic wand button here and paste the uh, DOI in. Now, a DOI might come to you in two different forms. A lot of times you'll see just the last part. So you'll just see a code like this. So you can paste it in just like that and it should work. The other way you can paste it in is with that full URL with the HTTPS DOI.org, that kind of thing. The last part is the most critical part here. And all you do is paste that into the little magic wand box and hit return. And you will see, in this case, that it looked up cultural values and definitions of a career success. It created the item, it highlighted it for me on the right. You can see that it says it's a journal article. Here's the title. I have four authors. I've got the journal publication, volume, issue, page range. So here's an example of a proper page range, 392 to 421. This says July 2020, so it's a brand new journal. And then you'll see a bunch of other stuff in here. So this is actually an abbreviated name for the journal that it came from, the language, uh, the uh, international ser serial number for the, for the, for the journal, uh, and the DOI itself will be in here as well. And in this case, there's actually a link to the article too. And if you go back to this web page, you can say, oh, there's my four authors, my year, the journal, uh, volume 30, issue three, that everything matches. So in this case, the DOI is almost always going to be perfect every time. <laughs> it's a great way to get information into, and it's probably one of the fastest and easiest ways to do this. And then now, of course, that I've got this in here, I can use the green arrow and use the library lookup, and then I could get a PDF version of the, of the file. In fact, I'm gonna do that in this case so I can show you how this works too. So in this case, it's gonna to go to the library um, catalog. It tells me that this article is available online at the Wiley Library. I have to log in with my Passport York. I agree not to steal things. And I will get, there you go. This is the article on the journal. And then here there's a link to a PDF. So I'm gonna take that PDF and it's open in my browser. So I'm gonna save it to my downloads folder. And then if I come back to Zotero, I'm going to minimize this so I can show you this properly. If I come back to Zotero, and I open my um, file explorer. You can see that I have the downloaded file here. If I preview it, you can see this is the article. And all I have to do if I want to attach this to my Zotero item is go boop and drag and drop. And you'll see that now I have an attached article here. Um, and usually by default, it will try to rename the article for you to match the metadata. So this weird file name that it came from, 
will get remapped. If you want to do it manually, you can right click on the PDF and say rename file from parent metadata and it will do that, rename that file for you. This is a great thing if you have a PDF with like a really strange file name and it doesn't make sense. This renaming thing uses this standard scheme of going author, year, title. It's just a nice clean way to keep your files organized. You don't have to do it, but it helps. So now I've got the citation for the article. I have all the information on the right, and I even have the PDF of the article all ready to go in Zotero. So that's the, the second way that you can do it, okay? Now the third way that you can add an article is directly from the library catalog. So let's see, what did I pick here in the worksheet for this? Uh, so I showed you the library lookup there, and here's the Zotero connector. So uh, this is just a, a link to an article that I found. Again, this one is a DOI article, but if I click this link, it's going to open up this article for me in my web browser. And this link should uh, also redirect you so that uh, if you need to log in, it will log in for you under Passport York. So I now have another article. Uh, on emotions linking abusive supervision to employee intention. And if I look up in the web browser, you'll see that that Zotero icon is now in the shape of a page, which means that Zotero has detected that this is a journal article. And if I click this little icon, it'll say, where do you want to save this to? And I can pick a folder, or most likely, if you don't have folders or collections, you're just going to say my library. You can add tags right here. So I could do HR example. Uh, you don't have to do any of this, but if you just say my library and done, then uh, just remember this title is discrete emotions. So then if I come back to Zotero, you can see that this article is now in my library, discrete emotions linking abuse abusive supervision. And on the right, you can see that Zotero has correctly identified it as an article. Uh, the title is here, authors. There's actually a full abstract as well, the journal, volume issue, page, year, all of this information looks correct. But again, I would just double check to make sure that it's right and then it's good. Sometimes when you use the Zotero connector in a web browser, by default, if it cannot detect what kind of thing it is that you are trying to import, it will detect it as a web page. So that's the biggest thing that you'll have to use to remind yourself of if you're using the web connector, is that um, make sure that the item type does not get incorrectly imported. Um, so if it comes in as a web page by default, you'll see that if I change this to web page, it'll say, hey, if you change this item type, you're going to lose the catalog, the volume, the pages, the DOI, because those are not information fields that exist for a web page. But for a journal article, I need them. And like I said, if I pick the wrong type, I'm going to get a bad citation. So always make sure that the item type is correct. The Zotero connector will not always automatically do it for you. So those are three ways that you can get uh, information into Zotero. Oh, and by the way, in this case, because Zotero was able to detect that there was a PDF available, it automatically pulled that PDF. And you can see that it just called it full text PDF. So in this case, because I know all of the uh, information here is correct, I can highlight that PDF and just click this rename file from parent metadata on the right click. And you can see that now it has renamed the PDF file to match the author, the year, and the title. Just nice and neat and clean. I'm, I'm Former engineer, I like things to be tidy. <laughs> Keeps all my files nice and organized. So there you go. I could double click that and read that article and I have my full citation information. So those are the three ways you can get stuff in. Uh, any questions about getting things into Zotero? Takes a little bit of practice. You can add stuff, but that's those are the basics of it. There's three different ways you can do it. So I'm just assuming that the point where we click on add new, that's where it, should, it will automatically uh, put it, right? When we're yes. pulling things in. Yeah. yeah. If you want to do it manually, you would do add new there. Uh, I, I love it when um, a citation includes a DOI, because if I have that DOI number, this magic, this magic wand will basically 100% of the time get it right. Sometimes the DOI has a typo in it or something, but if the DOI is, is valid, this will find it for you, guaranteed. Uh, you also may know that books have ISBN numbers. So if you go to amazon.com, for example, for a textbook, you will often find an ISBN number for a book. You can type that in and it will actually give you a book. So uh, here's a, a Miriam Taves book just to show you. This is All My Puny Sorrows. It's one of her fiction books. And you'll see that in the information, there's an ISBN number. So you can get a number like this, uh, paste the ISBN in there with or without the dashes, and you can look up a book that way as well. 
we're okay with uh, getting in, getting information into Zotero. Okay, then we get to do the fun part, which is how do you actually create a citation from this? So we are now gonna go into Microsoft Word. Uh, where did I put Word? I'm just going to open this blank document here. Uh, and in this case, uh, I also, um, for this uh, example in the worksheet, I created a, just a sentence so that we have something to work with here uh, that we can create our citation from. So I'm pretending like, here's my term paper is awesome. And I paste this in here and I make this bold and here's a sentence and I wanna add a citation for this, okay? So I have said here that a recent study connected abusive behavior of supervisors to employees' feelings of fear, shame, and anger. That clearly, because I said a recent study, indicates that I should be citing what study I'm talking about in order to not get in trouble. And so I would insert a citation here. Um, I will say, by the way, uh, that Zotero can help you a lot with citations, but you still should know the basics of APA citation and APA style. So. Um, there's a link in the worksheet to some guides for uh, APA uh, to help you understand how uh, a parenthetical citation should look. So you should be at least a little bit familiar with that. Uh, but this will take care of all the little niggly details. So I've added a space because I want to add a citation. Uh, and because this is a brand new document, the first thing I should do is uh, set up my preferences. So under the uh, Word menu, if I go to Zotero, you'll see a button here called Document Preferences. This only has to happen once, um, and I have to set up my security stuff. So what you'll get is this little pop-up thing saying, what are your document preferences? And you'll see that at the top, there's a list of citation styles, and you can pick whichever one you want. In fact, there's a whole bunch of other ones online. You can search and install other ones, but APA and Chicago are here. APA was recently updated to the seventh edition, so you're just gonna pick the seventh edition there. You can choose your language, which should be English by default. Uh, and I generally don't mess with these settings. Uh, you can, but uh, don't. So only thing you need to know is pick the citation style that you're using, which is APA, and click OK. All right, then you're ready to go. If I want to add a citation for this paper, I click Add Edit Citation. And you'll see that I get this little thing in curly brackets here. That's just a placeholder. And you can see that because this is the first time I'm using this, Zotero is trying to be helpful. It's basically saying type a title or an author to search for a reference. And I know that I want to cite the paper that we just uh, input, which was the paper on abusive uh, behavior from supervisors. So I know the word supervisor is in the title, so I'm just gonna type that. Um, oh, there we go, supervision. <laughs> uh, and you'll see that uh, as I'm typing, it will try to um, find me things that match my search results. So in this case, it could match a word uh, in the author's name. So you can type the author's name, you can type uh, a word in the title, that sort of thing. So if I type uh, the part of supervision, because I know that's the article, you'll see here, it's found the entry from my Zotero library that I want to cite. This is the paper that I like. And when I select that, what you'll see here is what the in-text citation is going to look like. And if I were to hit return right now, it would put in that citation just like that. So now I've got Peng et al. 2019. That's my APA citation. It's done. Um, if there are instances where, oops, I want to uh, edit this, for example, if I want to add more than one paper, for example, if I put my cursor in that field anywhere and click the Add Edit Citation button again, you'll see that the search bar comes up and it's got the existing citation pre-filled. So I could add, for example, this is just at random. I could add another paper to the list if I wanted to cite more than one thing. Uh, and I can delete that one because I don't want it. The other thing that you can do if you click on this is if I were citing a quotation, for example, and I need to put a page number in, I could put in a specific page number and you'll see that this gets updated to show that page citation there. Uh, the other thing that you can do if you are doing other certain formats is say suppress author. If I say suppress author, then I only get is the year. So that would be in a case where I say uh, Peng et al. 2019. Uh, stated that da, 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 that would be that that style, right? But by default, the basic style is going to include just your basic citation, which is the author and the year, just like that. So that's basically how you insert a citation. That's all you have to know. As long as you have good innovation in Zotero, you will be able to get good citations out of Zotero. 
So you can do this to your heart's content. You can add, you can delete them, you can remove them, you can edit them, you can do all kinds of great stuff. And eventually you're gonna to get to a point at the end of your paper under proper APA style where you're gonna to have to put in your bibliography. This is the part that everybody hates. So um, because APA style papers, we put references uh, usually at the top of a separate page. So I'm gonna insert a page break. So I have a separate page for my references. I can hit return and here's where my bibliography is gonna go. So if you've ever written academic papers before and you had to do this by hand, you probably are probably having an anxiety attack right now. Well, in Zotero, when all of your citations are set up, here's what you do. You put your cursor underneath the references and then you hit add bibliography. <laughs> add bibliography, <laughs> why you make me a liar? There we go, that's why it needed a person conversion. And there you go, right off the bat, what it does Sometimes it takes, if you have a long paper with a bunch of citations, it, it can take a moment or two because it goes through your paper. It collects all of these things. It creates one entry for every paper. And I get a complete citation here formatted in APA style. So it's indented properly. It has the hanging indent. I've got the, even the font is correct because APA style usually uses uh, Times New Roman. So I've got the authors, the year, there's the title, there's the journal title and it's in italics, which is proper the volume number 72, which is also in italics, the issue, the page range, and I've even got a link to it. And that's all I have to do. If I come back and edit my paper and I add more citations, all I have to do is hit the refresh button and it will add any new ones, remove any ones I've taken out, uh, update them. Let's say for example, that I discover that I have like a typo in the title of a paper, I can fix it in Zotero. As long as you fix it here in Zotero, then you come back to Microsoft Word and hit refresh. It will update everything in Microsoft Word to reflect the information that is in Zotero. So um, if you find a typo or uh, something in all caps or uh, some garbage, like sometimes I see, you know, the biggest one that I'll see is uh, on page numbers, for example. Sometimes you'll see, it'll say pages, 30 or anything like that. So it, that ends up showing up in your citation because it literally just takes the text directly from here and puts it in your citation. So any errors here are gonna show up. That's again with a garbage in, garbage out. And that's basically all you need to know. At this point, your citations are done, your bibliography is done, and you could print this paper and send it to your professor and then you get an A plus. That's, that's it, that's Zotero. Um, so that's how you get citations into a paper and how you create a bibliography. It's the easiest part, because once you do all the grunt work of making sure your data is correct and your information is in here properly, this part is like trivial. <laughs> so uh, we talked about Zotero, we talked about how to install it. Uh, we talked about um, setting up the web connector. We talked about uh, setting up the Microsoft Word add-in. And then we talked about how to get information into Zotero three different ways, uh, manually, which is slow but accurate, all the way up to the DOI, which is really fast and accurate. And then the Zotero connector in the web browser, which is uh, fast, but sometimes needs to be checked. And then we talked about using Zotero with Microsoft Word so that you can actually insert citations. The only other little tidbit that I want to tell you is that if you are working with Microsoft Word and Zotero, Zotero should be up and running. Uh, if you try to start Zotero from the Zotero menu and it's not running, sometimes it'll give you an error. Sometimes it will start Zotero for you. It's been a little bit inconsistent for me, but Zotero has to be running for it to work. Um, same thing with the web browser. Keep Zotero up and running, and that way you're always going to be connected to it. So that is the basics of using Zotero. Now, uh, if you are interested in learning more about uh, the fancier stuff in Zotero, like how to do this cool stuff with collections and tags and things like that. We have, uh, under the Bronfen Business Library Guide, there is under Citing uh, Resources, which is underneath the Human Resource Management, there is, I don't know, my browser won't let me scroll. Why, why, why? There we go. This will let me scroll. It's mad at me. Weird. Firefox is angry. Uh, there is, believe me, a link under citation and writing resources for Zotero, Zotero citation. So if I click that link, I get the Zotero guide. So in addition to the worksheet, you've got this guide here and you go across the top, you'll see that there's a tab for how to install Zotero, a tab for the information on the interface, a tab for how to get items into Zotero, 
And then there's some stuff here on how to share and organize stuff. And on the last tab, I have a bunch of uh, interactive video tutorials. So uh, I'm actually in the process of building a whole course for Zotero with a bunch more of advanced stuff. So there is an introduction to collections, tags, and related items. And then there's separate modules here for how to work with collections, work with tags, related items, and how to manage them with an add-on. So those are in-depth videos that describe all the cool ways that you can organize your library and manage it so that as your Zotero collection gets bigger, and if you're doing an MRP or a dissertation, it will get bigger, I guarantee you, to help you keep things organized so that you can actually find things when you're digging around and doing your work. Okay? All right. So uh, that basically covers the basics of Zotero. Uh, I guess we could pause now to find out if there are any questions and uh, see where people are at. Arlene says, that's so great. <laughs> So I'm just still struggling to put that Zotero tab into my Word document, uh, but I think I'll just check that later. Um, okay. And then so you, just you, had a quick... Mm -hmm. So you still don't have the Zotero menu in Microsoft Word? No, not yet. I've reinstalled as well, and I've restarted Word as well. I don't know, maybe if I restart my computer, that might work. I don't know, but um, yeah. So, yeah, let, so me, that... let me check into that, Zainab. I... I, I, I... I've heard of this problem before, but I think I might have to do a bit of a, a bit of a search, and I'll, I might send you a little note. There's a there's a trick for for resetting that. I think so it'll work properly. All right. There is, by the way, another way that uh, in a pinch. Let's say let's say for example, you wanted to um, uh, put a, a citation into an email or just copy and paste. You can do it kind of manually. So if you have Zotero up and running, uh, and I say here's that examining sources of influence. One thing is, you, if, if you right click, you can say create bibliography from item and you get this menu that pops up and it'll have APA picked by default. And you say, do you want the citation, which is just the in-text piece or the bibliography piece? And you say copy to clipboard and I say, okay. So what it's done is it's basically copied that to my clipboard. And then if I come into my document anywhere and just paste it, it'll paste that citation in. Uh, and this is actually really handy because let's say for example, uh, I don't have an email client that I can open. But oh, I, I can show you in just a, just a, here's a, just a uh, Macintosh notes that if I just take an item from Zotero and just drag it, that if I just drag and drop it, it copies and pastes the citation and creates it for me. So uh, I, I do this sometimes when I'm emailing one of you, if I'm sending you a link to something or a resource, I will just, I will just literally just drag. <laughs> And drag and drop, drag and drop, and oh, it just it create work. it just yes. creates the text. So that's a manual way of doing it. Those, if you do it that way in Microsoft Word, it's not going to dynamically update them for you, but uh, mm -hmm. it is an easy way to just get a citation so that you can say yes. copy and paste. If a professor and says, "Hey, give me a," and it yeah. there you go. Uh, now that that won't use that won't work properly with the updating part, but at least it will get you the text of the citation in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thanks for that. Any other questions, uh, basic questions about Zotero? So because it is so automatic, so uh, and if you select APA style and next, let's say after some time we decide to change the style from the back yeah. end, we will do the update. And when we refresh our Word document, I'm assuming that also is another one magic one. Everything will change automatically. Yeah, so this actually happened to me one time where I was working on a paper with a professor and then we decided to submit it to a journal. And then the journal said, well, we use Chicago. We don't use APA. And I was like, he was like, oh, that's gonna take you forever. So here's, here's what you have. So this, it's not quite as simple as this because Chicago, Chicago style has some different rules that I had still had to go and check. But in theory, let's say I wanted to change this to Chicago. I go to preferences. I would change the Chicago manual style, click okay. And um, yeah, this in text is still the same. Well, it looks almost the same, but you see there's no comma. So that's a Chicago style in text citation. And then you'll see that the uh, citation at the end, it's single spaced, the year is in a different place, the punctuation is in a different place, but that is an actual Chicago style citation. So you can just with one click, or I can even go to document preferences awesome. and pick like, I don't know, Vancouver, which is actually a format that's used by lawyers in Canada a lot. Um, there you go. So in this case, it's a footnote. So there's a number in brackets and then now it's put it as a, as a number at the bottom because that's the, how that citation style works. But that's how easy it is. 
But you can see that the one that I just dragged and dropped in here, the one that I just dragged and dropped in is not connected to Zotero in that way. So that one won't work because it's just it's just plain text. It's the ones that you add with with the Zotero menu that, that it will do this for. Any other questions? Awesome. I hope that this is very helpful. Uh, sometimes when I am talking about citation management with, with students, I say that if you're not using a citation manager, um, you're probably doing yourself a lot of harm. For me, the, the analogy that I like to use is that uh, using a site, using a citation, doing citations by hand would be like, you know how everybody makes bookmarks in the web browser, you find a web page, you like you bookmark it, it would be like instead of using the bookmarks in your web browser, that every time you found a web page you liked, you you pulled out a sticky note, and then you wrote it down and then put it in a pile, and did it all by hand. Um, it's, it's not, it's not efficient. And the thing about Zotero is that it takes care of all of the little details for you. It's not magic. It's not going to make your citations perfect because you still have to understand how citation works. You have to know a little bit APA style. But um, I have met with a lot of students who, I'm just going to take this back to APA again, um, who have a lot of anxiety about things like, well, what, what part goes in italics and where do the commas go and where do the periods go and that sort of thing. It can be a source of a lot of stress. Zotero takes care of all of that for you. The other thing that I saw, and I actually saw this in a paper that I was reviewing for an undergraduate journal, is that let's say, for example, I have a bibliography with uh, 20 entries in it, and then I edit my paper, and I have to keep going back to go, well, I didn't use this citation, so I can delete this one from my bibliography, or I added a citation, and then you have to put it into your bibliography and make sure everything's in the alphabetical order and stuff. It's a pain in the butt. Zotero will do that for you automatically. When I was in library school, uh, the professors didn't know that all of the students were using Zotero. And they said, um, don't worry, you guys are all getting great marks. But uh, when it comes down to it, it's the citations. The citations are going to separate the wheat from the chaff and use students. And uh, we were all using Zotero. And then the professors were so upset because everybody was getting perfect citations all the time. So they couldn't differentiate <laughs> the quality of the students by their ability to figure out where the periods go. So it's a big thing. All right. Uh, I am going to. Um, Stop the recording after I say that uh, the worksheet is a link to a PDF and uh, tomorrow I will uh, have this recording up on YouTube and I will send a link to Alberta and she will send it out. I'll send the link to the YouTube video and the PDF worksheet so that you can work through it on your own and get used to the basics of Zotero.